Now, I'm a fan of going to something more like TCR where the code minute by minute is always deployable. And so the code is minute by minute deployed. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's a separate conversation. Yeah. I, 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 and yeah, you, you, you can kind of wind that to different degrees in different circumstances to get different sorts of value, I think. But, but, but the whole idea that the, the, the thing, the thing that you said earlier, that, that, that seems to me, so core so central to all all of the stuff that i you know i've read from you and and heard you talk about really is this idea of making this pro- process in small steps and so you know the smaller the steps the better there's a i was watching one of your conference presentations and 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 you you were saying about the early days of um uh Thinking about work, you know, working in small steps. You say, oh, you know, if if we could, if we could get this to a state where we could, you know, we we could, we could, do, you know, uh, create something every month, that would be great. You know, if we did all the design in a month, and then then if we did it for a couple of weeks, and then if we did it for a week, and then if we did it every day, <laughs> and you're just bringing that time down, and you know, and at each stage, your design got simpler, at, and each stage, it's right. easier to understand, and at each stage, you're getting you know, more insight into what's really going on. Well, all all development is incremental. Yes. If you have a a thousand developers working on a system and you only release once a year, this is, you know, back in the bad old days, it was still incremental. You could, if you had the godlike view of all of that activity, one line of code was being written at, being finished at a time. You know, yeah. if you had sufficiently fine-grained timestamps, you could you could linearize you linearize all the lines of code ever written by a thousand people in a year. It's just that the feedback wasn't incremental. Yes. And so the question is, <clears throat> how closely do you want to match the feedback cycle to the to the changes? And yes. queuing theory suggests that your your sensing loop and your controlling loop should be about the same size. Yeah. So if you're changing code every 10 seconds, if you have a new line of code every 10 seconds, yeah. having feedback every 10 seconds would be would be ideal. That's yeah. that's the best you can get. Yes. And yeah, for lots of reasons people resist that, but um as far as I'm concerned, we're not done until we get there. This is the, I, I call this limbo because the limbo song asks, how low can you go? Yeah. So this is how quickly can we, we make the deployment cycle? Yeah. And uh, uh, I think there's a long ways to go. This is another one of these ideas that's probably 20 years ahead of its time, but uh, that's okay. You know, if people want to, um, if you, if people want, to experiment with this they could experiment with it today yeah yeah and and you know you you get into you know from from you know, the stuff that, that that i talk about you know ideas like organizing for continuous delivery continuous deployment so that you can you can exercise that all the way into production and you can you, you can just keep your eye and as you say everything starts to get simpler as that batch size that that size of change reduces because each change gets simpler and easier to reason about, easier to test, easier to isolate. You control in the variables. If I make this change and you make that change, which one is it that increased, you know, customer sign up? How do we tell? Well, if we release them one at a time, we can tell. <laughs> you know, it's it, everything becomes simpler when we go that way. I, I, I guess the thing that doesn't, the challenge that people face, which I, I assume is you know, from what I've read of, of on your site of, about your, your new book books is, is that the, the thing that doesn't really get simpler for many people is this idea of incremental design. That seems very natural to me over time. I, I, the way that you talk about it, it seems very natural. Um, do you think that that's an inherently difficult thing or do you think that that's a thing that, you know, we learn stuff the wrong way and, and so and so it's, you know, it's difficult to 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 change horses, or 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 is it is it just that you and me are weird? Well, that's certainly true. <laughs> I'm just not sure that that's relevant to the this conversation. <laughs> so I call this the salami slicing problem, right? So so 
in that story is all of software product development as far as I'm concerned. You have you have two variables. How thin are the slices and what order do you eat them? Yeah. I call it the succession problem. So to your question, is that a difficult problem? Partly I want to say it's an incredibly difficult problem sometimes to figure out the sequence that lets that that maximizes feedback that maximizes learning yeah that can be a, an incredible challenge <laughs>